Hey everyone, Jeff Macaron here, and today I'm going to show you how you can use a simple major triad to spice up your minor soloing. <laughs> Like me, you probably grew up listening to a lot of the classic guitar players. Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Peter Green, all those guys. Then later, Van Halen, for me, Michael Schenker, Randy Rhodes, Jake Ely, all these guys. As I got more into playing guitar, I got more into the fusion-y guys like Larry Carlton, John Schofield, Scott Henderson, Mike Stern, and my friend and sometimes bandmate, Robin Ford. These guys were hugely influential on me because they were... They could play blues and blues rock and, of course, fusion and jazz. But when they played the bluesy and bluesy rock stuff, they added in some other elements that I was not familiar with. That I loved the sound of. Now, I'm not talking about jazz here, so don't get scared. I'm going to take a simple idea that I learned from that idiom and apply it to blues and blues rock. So my chord progression is a basic D Dorian sort of amp. D minor 7 chord going to a G major triad. The D in the bass. Lots of Pink Floyd tunes do that. Lots of jam tunes do that. A lot of jam bands do this. So if you're in a jam band, this is super cool as well. Now here's the simple concept we're gonna use. I'm going to use a five major triad over our one minor chord. Now if that seems a little confusing, it's, think about it. I'm in the key of D minor or D Dorian. D Dorian is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So if I just count up five notes from my D, D, E, F, G, A, I get an A. A is the fifth of the scale. So I want to use an A major triad over my D minor vamp, like you heard in the beginning. What this does is it adds a note that's not in the D Dorian scale. So D Dorian, once again, is spelled D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And if I add in an A major triad, or change the notes to make it an A major triad, A major is spelled A, C sharp, and E. And as you can see, the difference is going to be between a C and a C sharp. So the D Dorian scale is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now if I make that C a C sharp, I get a C melodic minor scale. Now hopefully you're hanging with me here. When I started learning a melodic minor scale, I would try to solo using a melodic minor scale and I just didn't ever make any sense out of it. I just was using the scale. but if I see it as an A major triad, resolving to the D minor. Let me show you a really cool lick to get you started on this. If you want the tab and the background track, please use the link above or below, or go over to Jam Guitar Lessons and you get that all for free. Here's the lick. So here I have an A major triad. So I'm going to E, A, C sharp, E, and resolve it to a D note. I'm going to shoot for that downbeat being the D. Three, four. Two, three, four. Now let's check that out over the track. That's pretty cool, and what this C sharp does, the superimposition of this A major triad, gives you this great resolution of. So you might say, Jeff, I really don't know my triads and their inversions. That's cool. I have a course available called Mastering Major Triads where I show you all of that and more. You can check that out using the link above or below, and while you're at it, your jam guitar lesson, see what else I've got going on over there. And don't forget, I have the free ebook and mini course called Arpeggios Unlocked. Now, why does this sound cool and why does it work? Well, the A major triad is not contained in my chord progression. And by adding in that C sharp, we add in some outside tension. And I start to get this bit more of this interesting sound that I can use judiciously. And it sounds really, really cool. 
So all I'm thinking about is this A major triad, and then resolving. Now let's go down a D minor triad. Now that sounds like salt into swing, doesn't it, right? So there, Mark Knopfler takes the same kind of idea. He's not thinking melodic minor, he's thinking more harmonic minor, but that doesn't matter right now. So we're borrowing from the melodic minor scale without really needing to know the melodic minor scale. Now I'm just gonna jam a little bit, just playing freely, and I'm gonna incorporate that A major triad with that lick over the track. <laughs> minor blues scale and I incorporated that A major triad just like I have it written for you. Now how do I get that under my fingers? I gotta just play it a million times and stumble and not make it work right. And Man that doesn't sound good. Oh I hit it that time. This is the way to do it. I had to practice this over and over again to make it sound natural. At first it's going to sound forced and that's totally okay just like anything you learn. You have to run through it and you gotta practice it. So now we're gonna take that same exact idea and check it out in a different position. So here's an A major chord, and here's a D minor chord. I'm gonna use those two shapes, I'm going to isolate those. I'm gonna play A major triad right here. And I'm gonna to go to the C sharp, back down, up, and up a D minor triad. Here's my lick, get in the tab above or below. Let's check that out over the track. What I love about the sound is you don't need to play it fast. I can just play it nice and slow like that. Or I can play it fast if I want, but you don't need to. It's the superimposition of this A major sound, this resolution over that D minor vamp that makes it so cool. Now I can make it more fun. I slide into the notes, change the phrasing a bit. One, two, three, four, one. All right, so do it on an offbeat, experiment with it. And what I would do is keep on playing that lick over and over again, like I did on the track. So here I'm gonna take that same idea, I'm gonna take the D minor pentatonic right here, and then put in the A major triad. Let's hear it in context. What I love about this is it falls so naturally with inside the minor pentatonic scale. So if I start looking at that, right, here's my A major triad, here's my D minor, A major triad, D minor, A major, D minor. So I have all these really cool ways that I can go back and forth between those two chords. It's a great exercise. So D minor is D, F, A, so I have my F, A, D, my inversion, my first inversion. A major in the root position, A, C sharp, E. D minor in the root, D, F, A, and then I could have that A major in the second, sorry, first inversion, C sharp, E, A. How about up to D minor, A major, D minor, A major. So D minor, A major, D minor, A major, D minor, A major. Let's hear that sounds. So you see how cool that can sound. I'm just thinking an A major triad, A, C sharp, E to a D minor triad, D, F, A. I can see the shapes. Really great sounds, and I mix that in with the blues scale. So 
once again, the way to get this down is to run the track and experiment. The formula, and this will work for any minor sound that you want, I'm using the five major triad superimposed over the one minor chord. Let's try it in a different key. Let's say I'm in G minor, right? So I'm gonna count up five from G. I can use my little kind of fifth there of my power chord. So a D major triad to a G minor. So I've got this G minor going. So this is something you want to work on because it's really useful, especially if you're in a jam band situation, a funk band, blues rock, anytime you have a minor chord, you can start to use this idea and you can get a lot of mileage out of it. And to me, it's much more interesting than just playing straight Dorian or pentatonic the whole time. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button as it helps me out quite a bit. Also, I have a course, once again, Mastering Major Triads and Mastering Minor Triads. All those are available using the link above and below for a special sale price. Also, Arpeggios Unlocked ebook and mini masterclasses also available at JM Guitar Lessons. Until the next time, I will see you then, and I'm Jeff Mackerlane.